His awareness of the ring space was clear now. He could hear the echoes of it in the fabric of reality, like he was pressing his ear to a ship's deck to know the status of its drive. The rage of the enemy was apparent to him now as he could hear its voices. The shrieks that tore something that wasn't air and something that wasn't time. Hey guys, Pete here. As you probably know, the pre-order is ongoing for the final book of the Expanse series, Leviathan Falls. And now when you go to the order page, you can click the cover to look inside and read the first four chapters. It's not a lot, but there is a surprising amount of things to talk about in this little tease. I'm going to do that today, but first I have to give you a spoiler warning. If you haven't read all of the Expanse novels, then this video isn't for you. I'm going to talk about things that you won't be able to unhear, and I suggest you take this chance to leave and go start reading instead. With that out of the way, let's get started. Leviathan Falls is listed as 528 pages, which is about 40 pages shorter than the average. But they're all about the same and it doesn't seem very important. It has one of the best dedications you can hope for while waiting for something like this to come to an end. Scrolling down, I definitely stopped on that and felt something. It has a complete dust jacket blurb and I will come back to that because it gives away some things that aren't touched on in the chapters. The sample gives us three chapters with three POVs and a one-off from the prologue which has been pretty consistent over the series. It's hard to say how many POVs total we can expect, but the other two books in this trilogy had a ton and I'm guessing we'll see that continue rather than what they did earlier in the series. First we have Jim, noticeably not Holden, which is how his chapters were always titled in the past. That seems important, so we'll definitely talk about that. Aliana Tanaka, who is a colonel in the Laconian Marine Corps, she played a role in Persepolis Rising, and it is nice to see her come back. And then we also get a chapter from Naomi, who after the events of Book 8 is the functional leader of the Underground. As for the prologue, guess who's back? The High Council of Laconia is back, at least sort of. The opening lines of this first book, first there was a man named Winston Duarte, and then there wasn't, beg the question of what remains to take the man's place. It's a question I've been thinking about for a couple of years. And there are some hints, if not answers, in the prologue as we flash back to the time before. This threw me for a bit of a loop because the novels don't usually open with a recap. That made it thrilling to realize that they were actually recounting Duarte's mind being blown apart like a pile of straw, and then it's coming back together. It had been clear that Duarte had been changing into something else ever since Cortazar started giving him the protomolecule treatments. He had new enhanced senses and other side effects and was even starting to grow new internal organs. He was becoming something else, and I think of Cortazar saying not dead becoming back in season 2, Duarte was becoming something half human and half protomolecule. It's interesting to get some insight into how his mind was working before it wasn't, and I do wonder if his scrambling during the Unknown Aggressor's counterattack after Tacoma set him up to come back as something even more durable. In visiting Admiral Trejo, we see that he at least picked up a new tool. And I just have to say, I feel for Trejo here. Ever since the God Emperor was reduced to his shuffling and slobbering self, Trejo's been working overtime trying to keep things together, only to get a thanks, but you know what? I don't really need you anymore. I got this. But this ability to kind of just show up places, it's very similar to what the protomolecule did with Holden and the Investigator. And if nothing else, shows that the new Duarte is in sync with the gate builders and their tech, possibly in a way we haven't seen before. Proto Miller was a completely different situation. His consciousness was absorbed into the project on Eros, while his body was broken down and repurposed for whatever was needed in building the ring gate. The connected proto molecule was manipulating Holden's brain so that he saw someone that he recognized. Amos, Kara, and Zan are different still. They all died and were put back together by the repair drones. They have a connection with the library as a result, and it's not really clear how much of them is still human. 
In some senses, they're frozen in time. Kara and Zan still look the same as they did. They never grew into adulthood, and they're not affected by the attacks in the same way Duarte was. He was a living human who was enhanced by the treatments. It made him vulnerable to those attacks, but not as vulnerable as the gate builders themselves. The fact that he came back makes it seem possible that now he might be more gate builder than human. That is, if the scales were tipped the other way before. And his comment about something more delicate, more sophisticated than him dying seems to be a nod to how unique he is. When he says that, in my mind, he's talking about the gate builders who were all wiped out by a similar attack. He has something they didn't have. He can inhabit a body that, at least for now, is immune to the Goths' attacks. That's definitely fascinating, and it shifts directly to being mysterious since he cuts out right after he talks to Trejo. Considering he's the POV of the prologue, we probably won't get another peek behind the curtain unless there's an interlude or something like that. And based on Tanika's first chapter, it sounds like everyone's going to be searching for him and reacting to whatever it is that he does. It's interesting and sweet that he came back for Teresa rather than the Empire. That his connection to her, that's what he was thinking about. In his love for his daughter and her being threatened by Cortazar, that's essentially what brought him back. I liked how they framed that and found it curious after he came back that he could sense her and could tell that she was alright, but chose not to appear to her. It makes me think that he wasn't able to. And if we think of the investigator as a guide, it's probably because there's no active protomolecule on the Rossi anymore. Trejo was on a Laconia ship that would have remnants of protomolecule built in. It also makes you wonder if his reaching out for her might not also be related to Amos' seizure, which I'm not really sure. It sounds cool, but it could just as easily be something he's doing in relation to the Adro Diamond in the library, because at one point he thinks about his connection from the quote I opened the video with, and there is mention of the Adro, LV, Kara, and Zan in the blurb on the back of the book. He's clearly operating on a different level, and I'm excited to see where that goes. The prologue is the most intriguing thing about this and the part that promises something new, but it's also nice to slip back into the familiar with the crew of the Rossi. They're on the run so things are pretty uneasy and Holden might have achieved a new level in his book opening PTSD which is really saying something. If you think back, he's always got something going on at the beginning, like Eros or the Ringgate Station or Illus, and this time he's coming off being imprisoned on Laconia. He was separated from the crew for a long time, an entire book, and all the parties involved had to start to accept that they'd probably never be reunited. You see Naomi thinking about that in her chapter, how she mourned Holden, and how she mourned the person she was with him by her side. How she wasn't ready for him to come back, and it's kind of that way across the board. The beginning felt somewhat cinematic to me, like watching a movie as it introduces each character as you get oriented with the world it's trying to portray. Here, what you get is that the Rossi is different, though. It has all those familiar things like Holden going to the galley for coffee, but what's missing really starts to stand out. Clarissa and Bobby are both dead, Jim is struggling to keep himself out of crisis mode, Amos is a black-eyed, gray-skinned, probably immortal, reanimated by the protomolecule walking corpse, and they've got Duarte's daughter Teresa on board. Teresa is kind of a shield, at least her presence should stop any Laconians from destroying the ship outright. But they are chasing after her, and none of the crew want to end up in a position where they would have to negotiate with the Empire. There's a laundry list of reasons for that at this point, so they're forced to keep moving and keep hiding. In the prologue, you get the idea that Laconia is still powerful enough with the ships it has left to threaten Earth and Mars. At this point, they still have to follow along with the Empire. The Underground, as a sort of insurgent force, rock them on their home planet and continue to operate scattered amongst the systems behind the ring gates. Elvi is still out there trying to figure out more about the Romans and the Goths, and Tanika is tasked with going after Duarte. Everyone everywhere is worried about the Goths, what the unknown aggressor's next move will be. 
The blurb continues, as nearly unimaginable forces prepare to annihilate all human life, Holden and a group of unlikely allies discover a last, desperate chance to unite all of humanity with the promise of a vast galactic civilization free from wars, factions, lies, and secrets if they win. But the price of victory may be worse than the cost of defeat. And there's evidence of the unknown aggressors fooling around with fundamental physics with the changing of the speed of light in relation to the last attack. We also know from a spoiler that Ty and Daniel put out there that they are still working on annihilating humans. Remember the last thing that Amos said in Book 8 when Holden asked him about the new things he knows since he's been changed. One of the things I know is that they're going to kill everyone. As far as Tanika's chapter, I like the characterization. She was a military badass in the tradition of Bobby, who was clearly more experienced and wiser than Singh, who ended up dismissing her. I like the twist in that of how she was there to smooth his edges, but he reacted badly, eventually screwing up everything. This new side of her makes her a lot more interesting, her tendency to get off on breaking the rules behind the scenes while still being a willing and passionate adherent to the idea of Laconia. It makes her feel like she might have some unique takes on things that could certainly come in handy. I imagine she'll come across the Rossi in her search for the High Council, but perhaps in the end they'll have to work together anyways. That idea of becoming is the thing that kept jumping out at me. Setting the stage with Duarte's becoming something that's probably going to be essential to the conclusion after his being something that was essential to the beginning of setting up this dire situation in the first place. Holden as Jim? You have to wonder if they'll eventually switch the heading on his chapters when he becomes what the crew and humanity needs him to be. We know he's been on this nine book journey to become what the writers need him to be, and that's something that we're finally going to get to look at. Amos is important as well. I believe him when he says he's still in there, but can only guess that his current condition will prove to be essential in some way with whatever they're up against. Plus, they have a dog now, flying around in space on the Rocinante. That's fun, and I think that's a good place to leave it. Let me know what you think about these sample chapters in the comments and what you think is going to happen. I did see a post about reading beyond these chapters, and I did read one more Tanika chapter, a different POV, and one of either Naomi or Holden's, I can't remember. I thought it was as far as it went and that it's fixed, but then I heard that you can actually see the end if you mess around with it. I don't want to know what happens. Nobody else wants to know what happens if you did that. I don't want to hear about the ending without reading everything that leads up to it, so please do not spoil things in the comments. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.